Olivier, I'm up on the roof. There's a signal flare in the distance. I assume it's red? Yes. Must be the drop zone. That's your target. Time to roll. Good luck. Yes, sir, Olivier, sir. <laughs> Anton was a good guy. So let's do our best. For him. Try to keep a low profile out there. Don't let NAR spot you. And don't take more than you can easily carry. Hey, you! Jesus H. Christ, you startled me. Never, ever do that again while I'm working. In fact, never do that, period, whether I'm working or not. What are you doing here? Well, someone sold me a combination for this safe, but... But they pulled a fast one on you? That'll happen when greed gets the best of you. What? No, greed is good. It makes the world go round. And this, well, chalk this up to an occupational hazard. Still, it's a shame. I paid good money for this combination. Maybe I can open it with some lockpicks.
They? Who's they? Well, very important people in highly important places. Oh, like who? I can't tell you. If I did, I'd have to kill you. Just kidding. <laughs> I should hope so. So, any idea what's inside? Something of great value, no doubt. Why else would they lock it? Jesus! I should have brought a crowbar. Or a stick of dynamite. Yeah, dynamite would definitely do the trick. You got yourself in a tough spot here. What are you going to do? Well, I can't open it. But maybe someone else could. Maybe. But it looks pretty old. Might be that it's rusted shut on the inside or something. Could be. Oh, fuck this junk. It's over. I give up. You're giving up? Well, it's not like I can call a locksmith here, can I? I've wasted enough time on this. You can try your luck if you want. Completely stuck. Regular lockpicks won't do.
Some traces of the portal generator. You must be close. This is not going to end well for you. Olivier, I can see the crates. It looks promising. Well done. I know you worked hard for this, but don't get greedy. Remember, low profile. Don't listen to that soldier boy. Fuck low profile. Remember the pointers I gave you, Igor. Be a pro. Igor, any ammo you leave behind, they're gonna use to shoot you in the ass. Blow that shit sky high. I'll take my chances. We don't get many opportunities to really stick it to them like this.
What was that bullshit back there, Igor? I thought we had an understanding. Why would you do something so reckless? Look, I appreciate your advice and everything, but you're not my father. I can make my own decisions. Clearly you don't give a shit about my advice. But have it your way. Whatever. Let's see how far you get, acting like the star of some shitty action movie. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going back to monitoring NAR comms. Find out how much damage you've done to our cause. This doomed, Mousy. Dial it down a notch. You'll bring the NAR down on us. Or worse. I can see us all in the devilish clouds, touched by the cold hand from hell. A green swarm is spreading like wildfire, ending everything we know. The Red King is triumphant, but even he falls prey to the horror he has unleashed. So, nothing new. You make fun, Mousy. Well, you do so at your own peril. Tell me, what do you do with something that is broken? Do you fix it, or do you raise it to the ground? You're talking about Chernobylite? <laughs> I'm talking about the world! Not sure I follow. Why do you think the Rat King chose this world for his wrath? It's not because we're so very noble and good. But because we're evil, sinful, and broken. Fundamentally broken. Our actions have invited him in. Since the dawn of time, we've done unspeakable things to our own kind. And to the world we inhabit. Who knows? Perhaps this is our punishment. Perhaps we deserve. Yes? Deserve what? Deserve to live our final days in the age of the rat. Either to atone for our faults, or finally be annihilated. I'm not a philosopher or a mystic, but I believe there's still a chance for us to improve. That remains to be seen, Mousy. But we are living in the last days. Mark me. Hey there, Tarakan. I was wondering if there's anything you'd like to teach me. But of course. I have been blessed with the wisdom of the great Ratcatcher. And I've also spent a lot of time in the zone. I can give you some pointers. Fantastic. I'm ready to learn. This is a big day for you, Mousy. For today, you get to be the cat. Thanks to your PDA thingy upgrade, you can now detect those pesky NAR soldiers, shadows, and living creatures in general. I also replaced your regular battery with a more advanced one. For a while, You'll be able to run a scan more often than usual. But throw it away afterwards, or it will explode. Whether you're out on a hunt or simply trying to avoid danger, it's pretty useful if you ask me, Mousy. Now let's do a live practice. I'll hide, and you find me. I hope you understood everything. You're such a clever Mousy after all. Close your eyes and count to 100. And no peeking.
Well done, Mousy. See how useful this can be? Remember, it's hunt or be hunted. That is the law of nature. That was a good effort, Mousy. Now you're better equipped to deal with rats. I need to talk to you, Igor. Sure. Is something troubling you? Memories. According to my mom, life was actually pretty good around here before the accident. I know. I used to live here myself a long time ago. The details are a bit blurry, but I have warm feelings about the past. Right. Then you must know that life in Chernobyl was better than in other parts of the Soviet Union. My mother told me that all the closed cities, the secret cities, offered creature comforts in exchange for secrecy and obedience. It was a privilege to live in such a place. You could always buy whatever you wanted. The streets were safe and the pay was decent. Everybody believed the authorities would protect them from any harm. They were such good comrades after all. They would have gladly given their lives for this country. And for what? All the cover-ups, the KGB worrying more about appearances and the state secrets than their own people. My mom's friend Katya was living in Kiev at the time of the Chernobyl catastrophe. She was pregnant. And only one week after the reactor blew apart, she marched in the May Day Parade of 1986. Can you imagine? It wasn't cancelled. What a crime. The authorities never warned anyone. They claimed it was completely safe. They didn't give a fuck about them. They just wanted to keep a lid on it. Katya told my mom that by the end of the day, she and her husband had a strange purple tan on their faces and could barely catch their breath. Katya's son was born a couple of months later. It was very sick. I'm so sorry, Olga. You should be. You were part of this mess, even if you don't remember it. My apologies, Igor. I, I shouldn't. I, I had no right to. That's okay. These are painful memories. You have a right to be upset. Igor. Hey, what's up? I was thinking about secrets. Any particular secrets? Did you know the medical data gathered after the atomic strike on Japan was classified? Whoa, nothing like a ray of sunshine to start your day. Seriously though, it's not that surprising. This American diplomat I met once told me about it. He said the US Army was shocked at how deadly the fallout was. They put more than 20 billion dollars into the Manhattan Project after all. After their amazing victory, they couldn't admit to the public how toxic it was. Even the American troops helping the Japanese rebuild were getting sick. So they confiscated all the medical data, Japanese and American, and classified it. That's regrettable. The biggest crime the nuclear powers have committed against their citizens was failing to admit that long-term exposure to even low levels of radiation can be more deadly than a high dose received in a short amount of time. Yeah. That kind of secret kills people. How are things, Professor? Namas fucking day, Igor! And good day to you, Mikhail. I saw you fooling around with some cards earlier. Are you a gambling man? These are tarot cards. Huh? Are you moonlighting as a gypsy? Where's your crystal ball? Oh, let me think where I left it. Oh, now I remember. It's up your asshole. You don't like anything that doesn't fit with your mind-numbing scientific worldview, right? I don't like superstitious nonsense without any basis in reason or fact. You can bet your skinny little ass there are things around here that can't be easily explained. You should keep an open mind instead of just burying your face in books. The tarot can be a powerful fucking tool if you let it. Okay, I'll bite. What does the tarot say? I actually already pulled a card for you today. The lovers! Nice! This card can have multiple meanings. There's the obvious one. Me and Tatiana? 
very good, but it also means having to make a choice. One that will have consequences you cannot foresee. I'd have to pull a second card to get into it. Should I do that, Igor? I think I'll stick with my mind-numbing scientific worldview. Thanks anyway.